Welcome to your astrological forecast for the week of Monday, May 30th through Sunday, June 5th. This week, the the main theme that I can see from the planets is that we are returning to normal. I know I said that last week, but last week was really this huge transition, this huge shift to uh, begin transitioning from this really intense kind of storm we were experiencing, the storm of Mercury retrograde and the eclipse season happening at the same time. And last week, we were kind of ending the storm. The storm was dissipating. Now, the storm is kind of, you know, pretty much gone at this point. Um, you know, we've got Mercury turning direct this week. We also have a new moon, which is not an eclipse. So it's really beginning a new lunar cycle that's not affected by eclipses whatsoever. So we're kind of fully going back to normal this week. Um, you know, I said that was kind of the first thing I, I uh, <laughs> kind of got from looking at the planets for this week we are returning to normal. But then I thought, you know, there's many different kinds of normal. There's many different ways of being normal. So what type of normal is this? Um, so more specifically, the energies that we're beginning to experience this week are really heavily dominated by Mercury. Okay. Um, you know, we've got, well, pretty much for the reasons I just said, we've got a new moon in Gemini. So with the new moon in Gemini, both the moon and the sun are conjunct in Gemini. That means that they're both ruled by Mercury, so both um, luminaries and the lunar cycle are ruled by Mercury, and at this same time, Mercury is preparing to turn direct this week. What that means is that, like I've said before, you know, when planets are stationing, when they're stationing retrograde or stationing direct for that matter, um, they don't just immediately start moving in a different direction, you know, from our perception. They slow down, they kind of stop, with Mercury's case, Mercury doesn't really move degrees for like a week or a week and a half or so as it's making this transition. So there's this kind of intermediary period where the planet in question, you know, in this case Mercury, is basically at a standstill as it prepares to change directions from our perception from Earth. So what this means is, you know, as a planet slows down, the slower a planet is, the more intense it is. And we can see that with the outer planets like Neptune and especially Pluto. Um, you know, Pluto is basically almost always stationary. It's barely moving. So it's always intense. And we experience this with the inner planets as well. When they do slow down for these periods, you know, Mercury is usually really fast. But this week, it's very, very slow. It's barely moving at all. And when planets are stationary like this, their energies become intensified. So this is another reason why we've got some really intense Mercury energy, a lot of new developments with Mercury. And what that basically means is we're, we're experiencing Mercurian themes a lot more. So with the new moon in Gemini, we're beginning, we're having a lot of beginnings, um, especially within the next week or so related to Mercury. So how are we learning? How are we adapting? Those are the themes explored by Mercury and especially by Gemini. Um, how are we, you know, opening ourselves to information, obtaining information, dispersing information? This this kind of pertains not just specifically to information, but also to a lot of our habits. Mercury rules kind of the details of everything. So what are your daily habits? What are your daily kind of movements? Mercury has to do with um, short distance travel. So how are you traveling in your neighborhood? What are your kind of neighbor neighborly connections? Or who are the people you see every day? A lot of that is kind of up for, um, to be put in question and, you know, there might be changes there this week. Um, going back again to Mercury stationary, this means that the Mercury energy is intensified. So right now our words are intensified, our thoughts are intensified, our mannerisms, all these things are kind of mercurial. We might come across intense information and we might then therefore relay that information maybe in a more intensified way. Um, so there's kind of this importance that's put on information and adaptability right now that so that's kind of the main focus but again you know this is all in a more normal way as i say um you know yes mercury is kind of intensified so we might be um a little bit rigid or intense in our movements and our and our speech patterns maybe but this really doesn't compare to what we're moving out of, though. We're still out of the storm. So I want to stress that, you know, we, we just got through some huge, you know, turbulence. Um, so, so, you know, yes, maybe our mannerisms and our learning are kind of intensified, but this is very mild compared to what we just experienced. 
Um, besides all this kind of mercurial stuff, we also have Saturn turning retrograde at 25 degrees Aquarius. So the there's actually less structure when Saturn goes retrograde. It's like Saturn kind of goes to sleep. Um, it kind of, you know, the Saturnian energy goes inward. And because Saturn typically, you know, is the structure, it's the hierarchy, it, it's the limitations, um, it's kind of the glue that holds everything together, but it's also the boundaries that hold us within. You know, we're always constrained by our limitations, by our resources, for instance. So these are all kind of Saturnian themes. And with Saturn retrograde, it's almost like it kind of loosens the reins a little bit. It says, you know, there's less limitations, there's less structure. And um, I think our first reaction might be like, okay, great, this is really cool. I can do whatever I want. There's more freedom. Um, but it's not all, you know, nothing's all good or all bad. Um, there's also less structure. So we can be kind of, you know, there could be, there can be more like wild energy, I guess, or, you know, less, um, discipline, less structure. So that can be more fun. There can be more spontaneity, but there can also be more, I don't know, dysfunction with Saturn retrograde. Um, let's see. And that's pretty much what's happening this week. We have moon, uh, going from only Gemini to Leo. It's only going to traverse three signs this week. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the overview. So let's get into the more specifics here. So we start out Monday, May 30th, and right off the bat, we've got this new moon in Gemini. You can see here, um, this is the chart for right, right around noon Eastern Standard Time. And at this time, the new moon has already occurred, so it looks like it's happening in the morning Eastern Standard Time here. It happens at 9 degrees Gemini. And it's really not aspected by anything. There's a really loose sextile to Mars and I guess Jupiter too in Aries. Um, you know, orb of like five and six degrees for Mars and Jupiter. But, you know, this is mostly unaspected, I would say. And I almost kind of welcome this. This means that this new moon is not very intense. It's not connecting to a lot of other planets. Um, you know, yes, there is this new beginning in Gemini. So the new beginning with maybe people we associate with so you may meet new people at this time and th and this is more it's not like intense relationships that we're talking about gemini likes to keep things kind of shallow gemini is more about acquaintances neighbors co-workers you know people that you kind of just bump into every day um gemini also has to do with like siblings i guess but it's more these kind of casual relationships so you may have um, either you know new connections in those areas or maybe the connections you already have in that kind of area are being redefined at this time. So maybe you're seeing some people more, some people less, that type of thing. Um, Newman and Gemini, like I talked about before, also has to do with learning and adaptability. So you may be coming across new information at this time. Gemini is always like a sponge. It wants to soak up as much information as it can. And it almost doesn't care. It doesn't discriminate the information. So Gemini... Gemini likes to talk about really deep stuff and get into the complex, you know, philosophy and the bigger questions of life. And Gemini also likes to talk about the really shallow stuff. It likes to gossip. You know, Gemini doesn't care. It just wants information. It wants all the information. I've said before that it's almost like mentally obese. It just consumes information indiscriminately. Um, so even if you don't have a lot of Gemini placements, this is something we all kind of experience um, starting with not only having sun in Gemini, we're in Gemini season, but also especially after the new moon in Gemini, we're, we're fully immersed in the Gemini energy. So we're all kind of curious, we're learning a lot, we're maybe a little bit more talkative or sociable, we're um, inquisitive and more, more searching for information. And again, that it doesn't matter if it's complex or shallow information, we just want to learn and talk at this time. Um, and that's the main development for Monday. Um, all in all, it seems kind of like a chill Monday, I would say. You know, it's a s slow start to the week, more so. Um, there is a lot of Mercury energy, so that would imply, like, quickness. A lot of, like, quick movements and detail-orientedness. So we're, we're focused on the minutia at this time, on the details. But with this new moon, new moons are the most peaceful, the most calm part of the lunar cycle, I always say, just because... Um, the moon's energy is almost kind of obscured it's from view. It's absent. The, the moon has no light at this time since it's so close to the sun. It's kind of blinded out by the sun, if you will. Um, so with that absence of the lunar energy, things become kind of more chill, just more relaxed. So really, it seems like a relaxed um, start to the week to me.
let's go forward to Tuesday, May 30th, uh, 31st, excuse me. Um, so we continue having the moon continue through uh, Gemini. It still has little to no light at this point. We're still just beginning this new lunar cycle. It's kind of a, a baby moon, if you will. And the moon does square Neptune at this point. So um, it, it's always funny, you know, the, whenever we have squares between a Gemini planet and a Pisces planet, um, you know, it brings out the energies of Gemini and Pisces, and I, I would say that these two signs are the least structured of all the signs, um, and especially with Moon and Neptune, these are more, you know, bodies that are intuitive and more kind of focused on, like, fantasy and imagination together. Um, so Moon and Gemini is very imaginative, more in kind of a logical way, in a um, mental way. But making this connection to Neptune, we can maybe experience enhanced imagination, creativity, be very kind of artistic. This would be really good if you're trying to maybe write something or create some kind of artwork or anything where you need some kind of imagination or inspiration. Um, this can also be challenging in the sense that our imaginations can kind of run rampant. So we might see things as more positive than they actually are we might also be you know paranoid and see things as more negative than they actually are it can be hard to you know quantify things with with neptune and with pisces um aspecting the moon like this so um so there is that otherwise generally we continue to have more kind of general um more more chill relaxed vibes because again the moon's light isn't there it's, we're still kind of experiencing this new moon um also just quick reminder you know mercury is stationary through all this so everything i talked about at the beginning of this video where you know mercury is intensified we're kind of intense in our learning and our speech um all of that is true throughout this whole week so definitely on tuesday we're kind of um maybe thinking more in a slightly more serious way or coming across more like serious information and this is just part of the transition. We're transitioning from Mercury retrograde to Mercury direct. And, you know, this doesn't just happen with like a flip, a flick of a switch. Um, it's, it's a transition. And the, the transitions between, you know, going into Mercury retrograde or ending Mercury retrograde can also, they can sometimes be more dysfunctional than the Mercury retrograde period itself. Um, so, so it's a process is kind of what I'm saying. But, um, but yeah, Tuesday... Generally pretty chill, maybe some intensified Mercury, you know, thoughts and speech and and uh, great day for kind of a wild imagination, I guess you could say. Wednesday, June 1st, we start the month here. Um, I can't believe it's June already, but we have the moon entering Cancer kind of early in the day, Eastern Standard Time. And the moon does make a couple aspects. Um, so it the moon will... Once it enters Cancer early in the day, it sextiles Venus, which is pretty nice. Um, moon is in domicile on Cancer, so it's really strong there. We're feeling emotionally confident. We know how we're feeling more so with Moon and Cancer, so that's pretty nice. It can be easy for us to kind of understand each other and to feel more natural or more confident. And with this sextile to Venus, Venus is also in domicile in Taurus, so... That shows that the pleasure, the desire, the attraction, you know, which is ruled by Venus, is also in a very natural state with Taurus. So we're, we're feeling confident in those areas as, as well. We're, we're more able to readily uh, kind of get what we want with Venus and Taurus, especially materialistically. So this aspect is really beautiful. Sex dolls are harmonious. Um, so this just indicates that not only are we feeling kind of confident, we're, we, we know how we feel but we're also able to get what we want. You know, it's more easy to be attractive ourselves and in doing so to kind of attract to us what we're attracted to. Venus is all about attraction, being attractive, attracting, um, being attracted to things, attraction both ways, always. Um, that's all that Venus is about. So with, with this aspect of the moon, really, really beautiful. We can kind of um, we can almost be a little bit softer with this aspect. We can be more gracious or polite. We can, um, you know, we can kind of get what we want without having to spend too much energy. Um, we can get what we want just by being, I don't know, pleasant ourselves, if that makes sense. Um, we also have an aspect that's a little bit different. So Moon also squares Mars and Jupiter um, kind of early in the day, Eastern Standard Time, as soon as it enters cancer um so 
this would show that Moon is connecting to a much different energy. So Mars and Jupiter at the beginning of Aries is very expansive. It's very, um, I want to say like ballsy. You know, it just gets out there. It has the gall to, you know, make a daring move, to take a risk. Um, you know, it just, Mars and Jupiter together in Aries really supports us just being on fire with inspiration and going out and just getting whatever we want and not being afraid of anything. It's a very courageous and expansive energy. So with Moon squaring this, this shows that there's some kind of crisis there, some kind of change needs to be made. So maybe we do have certain um, ambitions that need to be questioned or put in check. You know, maybe they're not compatible with what's actually happening. You know, maybe we're ambitious for things that aren't really in line with reality right now. Um, I wouldn't really worry too much about this. This is a lunar aspect. Moon travels so fast that this won't even last the whole day. You'll just experience kind of a, a blip of this energy. It'll just last maybe, I don't know, two, three, four hours of the day. Um, but there could be kind of some edginess or, or competitive energy here. Um, and really the way to utilize this, I would say, would be to just... I don't know, maybe kind of look over, you know, what are you ambitious for? What what are your personal desires? And this is, um, it's kind of like Venus, but Venus more has to do with, um, it's more empathetic, more has to do with other people. With Mars and Jupiter and Aries, this is more of a kind of self-oriented energy. So what are your desires? What do you kind of personally desire just for yourself? You know, what's this kind of more, a little bit more selfish side of things? Um, do you have certain ambitions there? And are there changes that need to be made there? This could be a good time for um, having growth in those areas and maybe making progress there, but you may need to do so in a way that involves changing your ambitions or reorienting them in some way. Okay, and then let's go forward to Thursday, June 2nd. Moon continues through Cancer, which again is really beautiful. It's just... It's just easy with planets and domicile, um, you know, and, and we have kind of a lot of inner planets and domicile right now. We've got Moon and Cancer, Venus and Taurus, Mars and Aries. So the more planets we have in domicile, the more natural we feel. We feel like things kind of just make sense. We feel the way we're supposed to feel. We feel ourselves, you know, we feel like, you know, this is kind of the most natural version of me. We feel in our elements. Um, so things are easier and things are simpler with planets and domicile. Um, I don't want to say, you know, like I say, nothing's all positive or all negative. The only downside to this really is that we're more kind of in the box. We're more mainstream. So it may be harder to think outside the box. Um, there may be less kind of um, provocative things happening right now. But again, that's what makes it so normal and peaceful and easy. Um, things are relatively simple right now. So I think that's really nice. It's almost like we're getting a break after this really intense period we experienced for the last month or two. Um, things are pretty easy right now, honestly. A lot of the these placements are, are relatively easy. So I think that's really nice. And I feel like I feel like we deserve kind of a break at this point. So really beautiful. Um, also on Thursday at this point, Moon is starting to gain light. You may see it as a crescent, like very early in the morning after sunrise. Um, so we're just kind of seeing the glimmerings of this new lunar cycle. And I think that's really especially beautiful since the Moon is in domicile, Moon is very strong in Cancer. Um, so we're just kind of seeing the beginnings of this new lunar cycle. Again, this lunar cycle has to do with Gemini, since it's a, a new, it was a new Moon in Gemini. So... Um, so new developments may be kind of beginning to to gain some momentum here regarding, again, our personal connections, you know, especially sh shallow or casual connections, um, how we are adaptable, how we're learning, the information that we're uh, privy to, et cetera. All of that, you know, there may be kind of new beginnings beginning to occur as the moon gains light through Cancer. Um, okay, and then one aspect the moon makes, the moon does sextile Uranus. So, um, and you can see here, it's actually making an exact sextile. So it looks like right around noon, Eastern Standard Time. Um, and when I say Eastern Standard Time, if you, you know, I understand many of you may not live in this time zone. So you can kind of just give or take um, however many hours away you are if you want to get really specific and see how this affects you. Um, but anyway, so moon sextiles Uranus. This is a really great aspect for 
gaining awareness, gaining perception. Again, like I always say, you know, this isn't necessarily insight or information that you work for or that you intend to gain. This is information or awareness that catches you off guard. You know, your honest is always kind of unpredictable. You can expect the unexpected. Um, and with Moon making this aspect, you may, this is, this would be really great for like having intuitive messages at this time. Because the awareness that you'll gain is coming through the moon. Moon is our emotional body. So we may have kind of new emotions that are pointing us toward greater awareness, um, new intuition. You know, we're all psychic. We all have psychic abilities if we would kind of be more aware of them. Um, we all get kind of intuitive messages or understandings. We kind of feel a certain way about situations. Um, so with this Uranus aspect, I would especially pay attention to this on Thursday. Um, what are you feeling? Are you picking up certain vibes or messages? Um, because there may be something actually profound there. There may be something, um, I don't know, really potentially expanding your awareness there. You know, So that, that could be something really valuable to pick up on. Okay, moving right along. Um, Friday, June 3rd. We have Mercury finally turning direct, so that's probably the main event of this week. That's pretty powerful. Again, like I say, Mercury is stationary, though, so in reality, it's not really moving, but technically, it's very, very gradually beginning to move forward rather than backward from our perception from Earth. So what this means is, you know, we're literally changing directions, and like I say, that can be very dysfunctional, um, and Mercury pertains to all these kind of you know, habits, all the minutia of our daily activities. So that's where it does have a lot to do with technology, messaging, communications. Um, you know, a lot of people experience like car issues or, you know, technological issues um, with Mercury retrograde. And you may actually experience a little uptick of this as Mercury turns direct. Um, once Mercury gains momentum, though, and starts to move direct, that's where we will experience more normalcy. Um, because we are, most of us were born with Mercury direct in our charts, so we are more used to Mercury moving direct. Things move forward in a linear way. It's A to B to C. You know, things are more business as usual as Mercury turns direct. Um, so, okay, so as Mercury turns direct, there may be a little bit of dysfunction, some kind of seriousness with Mercury stationary as well. Uh, maybe, you know, you might just be like, wow, everyone seems a little bit more serious than usual, or, um, you know, maybe people need to lighten up a little bit, but we will lighten up very much so as Mercury gains momentum and things return back to normal. Um, as Mercury proceeds forward, it still needs to go through the area of space that it has just retrograded over, if that makes sense. So it's just traveled backward, now it's traveling forward, but it still has to make up for the area that it back went back over. So as it goes through, you know, that area, which is called the post shadow, um, we're basically experiencing the same themes that we were going through during Mercury retrograde over the last few weeks, but in a way that is moving forward now. So over the last few weeks, we had to go backward, we had to, you know, contemplate our lives and maybe run into people from our past or deal with things from our past. Now we're going forward, we're still dealing with those same themes or people or whatever it is, but in a way that is moving forward, if that makes sense. So, so we're kind of wrapping things up, you know, things are not as confusing now, we understand what to do, we're moving forward in a very linear way, wrapping things up, and then by the time Mercury will pass over the shadow and move into new territory again, that's where things will be fully back to normal. We can kind of forget the Mercury retrograde period at that point because hopefully we've learned and integrated the messages from that period by then um, and then move fully back to normal. So that's kind of the process. This is what Mercury kind of always does as it retrogrades and then moves back direct. Um, but this is something we're going through now. And um, I, would ex I would especially expect a lot more normalcy once Mercury enters Gemini. Um, just a little bit later this month here. Because then again, Mercury will be in domicile in Gemini. So that's where we experience a lot of more normy kind of energies, as I say. So so that's just something to look forward to. Maybe dysfunctional on Friday, but in the days following, things will become more normal, more functional, more simple. 
Um, okay, Mercury makes two aspects. It doesn't make these exactly. Um, because Mercury is stopping at 26 degrees, it doesn't quite make the square to Saturn, which is at 25 degrees, or the sextile to Neptune, which is at also 25 degrees of Pisces, um, if that makes sense. Hopefully I'm communicating that well. So Mercury, you know, if it retrograded back to 25 degrees, it would actually make this square to Neptune and sextile to, or excuse me, square to Saturn and uh, sextile to Neptune. But because it stops at 26 degrees, it's not quite exact. It will never be exact. These aspects will never uh, happen in, in this way um, exactly, but they're close enough that they are relevant and we would experience them, especially, again, because Mercury is intensified because it's not moving really it's stationary. Um, so the Mercury sextile to Neptune is really great for gaining intuitive messages, gaining inspiration, being creative, you know, um, really expanding on that imagination. Mercury itself can actually be very imaginative, but again, it's more in like a logical type of way. It's more, you know, Mercury's all about thinking and strategizing, so it, it does imagine quite a bit. So when you combine that with Neptune and Pisces, um, that's where we can, our imaginations can become a lot more wild and we can become more creative so maybe this could be really great for artistic stuff being creative it can also be good for spirituality so if you're i don't know doing yoga or like or um meditating anything of that nature could be more um you get more bang for your buck you can really gain you can really go into your subconscious and get some intuitive messages there with mercury squaring saturn this is a little bit difficult different and difficult um I combined both of those words there for a second. But Saturn in Aquarius is really challenging us. How do we relate to the group? How do we associate with the group? Um, you know, what is the nature of the community? You can see how these things are all very challenged right now. We don't fit into the group. A lot of us don't want to fit into the group. A lot of us don't like people. It's surprising to me how many people don't like people. You know, we all um, are kind of fragmented at this time, I think, in a very deep way with Saturn um, in Aquarius. You know, this has really um, been exacerbated over the last two years, you know, especially with COVID. So that pretty much most of the whole time we've experienced, you know, COVID and all this nonsense um, has correlated with Saturn in Aquarius with all these challenges to our community, to technology. How do we communicate with one another on a kind of global or societal level? All these things, things have been challenged. So with Mercury making this aspect to Saturn, we may experience kind of a more acute challenge in that area. So it's becoming more relevant. Um, you know, how do I associate with the group? What's my role? Um, how do I fit in with the larger society? Or, you know, maybe I don't fit in. How does that kind of work? Um, all these issues can kind of come up now with Mercury squaring Saturn here. Um, let's see. Really, I mean, there's two ways that I could say to deal with this. One way, and this might sound surprising, it's surprising to me, but one way you can deal with astrological transits like this is just wait it out. Sometimes you almost don't really need to necessarily do anything. Even if you don't do anything, even if you don't really learn from this aspect, Mercury will turn direct, it will move forward, it will leave this aspect, whether you've learned or not, whether you've done anything with this energy or not. And you know the, this challenge from this little aspect will dissipate on its own. So that's, that's one way of dealing with it. Um, if you are a go-getter and you really want to evolve a lot in this lifetime, you can try to capitalize from every little thing. That's definitely valid. Um, and so with that approach, I would say, I don't know, you know, I guess, I guess it's kind of obvious. You just really question, how do I fit in with the group? How can I turn this challenge into a strength? How can I strengthen myself from this? Um, how do, can I, you know, reevaluate my role with society and see the challenge and, you know, rise up to it? How can I make this challenge work in my favor? You know, if you have that mentality, then really you can do anything. You're unstoppable because the harder the challenges that's thrown at you, the more you can challenge yourself to capitalize on it and twist it around to your advantage and become that much stronger. Um, that's definitely easier said than done, but that is definitely a valid approach. 
also on Friday, the moon does enter Leo. It looks like early afternoon, Eastern Standard Time. Um, so this is, I really, really like this. You know, moon and cancer was really nice, don't get me wrong, uh, because it was in domicile and we we're just experiencing this, you know, beginning glimmerings of the lunar cycle. But now, as the moon enters Leo, it begins to make a waxing sextile to the sun. Not exactly, but at least by sign. Um, and not only that, but these are two yang signs. Leo and Gemini together are both very playful, kind of childlike. They, they want to explore. They want to kind of try things and, um, I don't know, they want to express themselves. They're really involved with expression. You know, they, they want to hear other people express themselves, and then they love that kind of back and forth um, the interaction. So, so yeah, Moon and Leo, it's a really fun energy, I think. Leo is probably the most fun sign, I would say. So um, I think this is really beautiful. The Moon aspecting the Sun like this is really beautiful. Um, it would also literally be beautiful seeing the Moon at this time. It'll be a waxing crescent, so it'll be kind of lit up on the right side of the Moon, if that makes sense. Um, you know, gaining light, and um, yeah, and with the moon beginning to sextile the sun, people are in good spirits, they, there's a, um, a positivity, and easygoingness, you know, this works really well, because signs that sextile one another are similar enough to blend well, to understand each other, um, to mesh well, but they're different enough to balance one another and complement one another. So that's where it's really, really beautiful having sextile energies like this. Um, you know, Leo adds some kind of fun, some fire, some flair to things. And then Gemini adds this kind of detachedness, this curiosity, this adaptability. So the, the energies work very well together. Let's go forward to Saturday, June 4th. Um, so the main event for Saturday is that Saturn does turn retrograde. It's kind of funny. Sa Saturday was actually named after Saturn. I don't know if people know that all the days were named after the planets, but they were. Um, but Saturday, Saturn turns retrograde at 25 degrees Aquarius. Okay, so yeah, this means a few different things. Like I kind of touched on at the beginning of this video, um, and like I've talked about more recently, <laughs> Saturn in Aquarius has put constraints on Aquarian themes. So it constraints with technology. You know, a lot of us, I've personally experienced, I can't necessarily express everything I want to through technology. Um, there are constraints there. There's, you know, moderation or moderation. I don't know if that's the right word, but, um, you know, we, we experience a lot of constraints and limitation with technology and with group activities. So we've, in many parts of the world, you know, basically all parts of the world, we literally have not been allowed to congregate in groups, which is one of, you know, our basic rights that's in the Constitution. I don't want to get political or anything, but, um, you know, but this this kind of, you know, typically we can get in groups. It's part of human nature. We can um, congregate in groups, and by doing so, we can not only spread ideas, but we can also use teamwork, synchronous, or not synchronicity, but... Um, there's a word for synergy. That's what it is. Synergy. We can get together, and the you know the sum of the parts is greater than the parts alone, or something like that. Um, as a group, we can accomplish things that individually we could not. So you know this is typically how we like to operate as humans. But during the last two years, since December 2019, since Saturn has been in Aquarius, we have not been able to do that. You know this basic you know human tendency has been kind of denied to for us. You know, we just haven't been able to do that. We've experienced a lot of um, constraints through technology as well. So with Saturn turning retrograde in Aquarius, um, uh, retrograde energies are more non-physically oriented. So they're almost a little bit MIA from a physical standpoint. So that's where, in the case of Saturn, you get a lack of structure. So the constraints are lifted. You can kind of maybe get into groups more. You can kind of do whatever you want more. Um, Saturn is usually like this, I don't know, I don't want to characterize it as a police force, but it kind of feels that way sometimes. And with Saturn retrograde, it's almost like, you know, this policing force isn't there. So for better or for worse, everyone can kind of do what they want a lot more so. So this can be a lot more fun. You know, we don't have those constraints. We can do whatever we want. Um, but, you know, we can also feel untethered at, at this time as well with the lack of structure. Um, what else here? 
generally Saturn is a malefic, meaning that it's a, you know, ancients would describe it as like an evil planet, um, more negative or more challenging. I, challenging would be a good word, I think. Um, so as it turns retrograde, honestly, it would be more positive or more, it'd make things easier having Saturn retrograde, generally speaking. Um, but it's not that Saturn's energy isn't there, although it might feel that way. It's more that it's turning inward, it's going backward. So we might be more focused on how we were constrained in the past, what our limitations were in the past, now that those limitations have been lifted. Um, and also there might be more limitations or changes to the limitations going on behind the scenes or happening, happening in a way that we're not really aware of in maybe a non-physical or a spiritual way. It gets kind of abstract and obscure like that. Um, but that's that's kind of my take on Saturn retrograde. And Saturn will be retrograde for the next, I think the next couple months or so. Um, other than that, on Saturday, Moon is still in Leo. So, you know, Sa let me put it this way. Like, Saturn is more, it's an outer planet. So this is more kind of going on in the background. This is more of a long-term energy. Really, this is something we've already began to experience leading up to Saturn retrograde. You know, these things happen very gradually, very slowly. This is going on more in the background, more on a societal level, um, on a more interpersonal level, more um, specific day-to-day -day level. Things are more positive. We're still experiencing this, you know, moon, sextile, sun, and it's actually becoming exact now on Saturday. So this looks actually really nice for, like, kind of more of, like, a party energy if you want to be more active or uh, be more social. This looks really, really beautiful. You know, Sun and Gemini again is very social, very curious, wants to talk a lot, talk about everything. And uh, Moon and Leo is very expressive as well. It's very proud and wants to have fun. Um, and I really want to stress that Moon and Leo really wants to have fun. That's its probably main priority. So, um, so yeah, this looks like a really fun energy. We can be more playful, spontaneous, etc. On Saturday, and it's. It's really perfect for a Saturday. This doesn't usually line up like this, you know. Um, it's very challenging to have astrology that fits perfectly with, you know, the work week. Um, but this really does fit in with the weekend really nicely. Saturday is kind of like how a Saturday should feel, especially with Saturn kind of lifting the regulation, so to speak. Um, Saturday, we can kind of have fun. We can play. We can, I don't know, maybe have a, a party or something. This looks like good party energy, as I say. Sunday, June 5th, um, we still have Moon in Leo. Moon is no longer making that exact sextile to the sun, but it's still sextiling the sun by sign, so it's still, you know, generally positive vibes. We do have the Moon making a couple of aspects. Moon opposes Saturn later in the day here in the afternoon, Eastern Standard Time, and Moon also squares Uranus. So it's almost like a, it's a kind of really loose T-square, I guess. It's not, I mean, it's not close enough, I should really say it's a T-square. But early in the day, Moon squares Uranus, and then later in the afternoon, Moon opposes Saturn. So with Moon squaring Uranus, there could be sudden kind of changes that need to be made, some unpredictability. I really wouldn't worry about this. Again, you know, you can kind of take lunar aspects with a grain of salt because they happen so quickly. They're, you know, a lot more mild than other like actual planetary aspects. Um, but moon, sex, uh, moon square, the you know, Uranus, would indicate sudden changes or maybe a little bit of volatility. But again, it's not much to worry about. Later in the day with moon opposing Saturn, um, we might feel constrained. You know, it's interesting. These energies are very opposing, not only by aspect, but also by their very nature. Moon and Saturn are typically opposing forces. Um, for instance, they're in domicile and signs that are exactly opposite, Cancer and Capricorn. Um, and so in this context, you know, Moon is pretty at home in Leo, kind of. Um, we're feeling very expressive. You know, we want to be in the moment and be our, you know, follow our own whims and desires with Moon in Leo. Um, but with Saturn and Aquarius, it's more about constraints and about the thinking holistically, thinking about the long term, being responsible and all that. You know, yes, Saturn is retrograde. It's that kind of, it's a more mild or sleepy version of Saturn. I'm almost picturing Saturn 
sometimes I picture Saturn, actually, sometimes I picture all the planets, the outer planets, as kind of like professors. And Saturn would definitely be, you know, the most strict professor, the one that's really by the book and more conventional or conservative. Um, but with Saturn retrograde, it's almost like he took an Nyquil or something, or he's kind of sleepy, he's sedated, he's more relaxed, he's like stoned or something. I don't know. Um, so we're we're experiencing this like more laid back version of Saturn, I guess you could say. This m usually strict force is kind of uncharacteristically laid back. So as the moon opposes Saturn, yes, you know, we may feel constrained in some way, but the effects of this are definitely softened by the fact that Saturn is retrograde. And again, also, moon is so fast, this aspect is not really a big deal. Um, generally speaking, moon is still in Leo, sun is still in Gemini. This is still pretty positive, still pretty fun. We are beginning to allude to moon entering Virgo, though, where it will square the sun. So that's going to be a little bit different that's going to happen next week um so that's what i have for you this week um all in all it looks like a good week i think it, it's it's almost kind of like a break it's a break that we all need and deserve next week we have a first quarter moon happening about halfway through virgo at 16 degrees so that's gonna be a lot more mercurial energy with sun and gemini and moon and virgo both of which are ruled by mercury um so that's gonna be interesting we also have venus crossing over uranus so there might be some changes with like the stock market and finances um, economic stuff changing and later this month there's some fun stuff too mercury entering gemini again full moon in sagittarius venus entering gemini sun entering cancer so a lot more changes always stuff going on um, but hopefully this helps you and um, anyway thanks for watching and i will see you guys next time